you would think an ETF index investment is simple. As a matter of fact, companies like the stock exchange, and here behind me we have the Swiss stock exchange, will always make you believe ETF investing is really simple. But it's all but simple. There are five things you have to analyze. First, the profile of the, profile of the index, then the costs of the index, then the liquidity of the index, and the risk of the index, and finally, regulatory differences. Let's begin with the profile. We already covered this, but remember, the Swiss market index is not the Swiss market, and the Standard Poor's 500 index is not at all the US economy. So be aware that the profile is not really what stands in the name. Let's go to the cost. You think the total expense ratio is the total of all costs associated with an index. It's wrong. All the trading costs to buy and sell shares within the index are actually charged to the index wealth, which means they are not part of the total expense ratio. And a tracking error, which may occur because of expensive trading strategies, again, is not part, part of the total expense ratio. So evaluating the cost is much more difficult than evaluating and reading the total expense ratio. Let's come to liquidity. You think an ETF is liquid. I can buy it and sell it at any time. But unfortunately, many ETFs also own really small stocks. And whenever the stock exchange goes down, it could be that the ETF is sold a lot faster than it is possible to sell the small stocks. Which means, in case of liquidity issues, when the stock markets crash, you may end up with an additional loss because of lack of liquidity. And finally, the risk is also not straightforward. It doesn't really mean that your ETF actually holds the shares that it says it holds. It could just as well see that they just make bets on the shares with other financial institutions. Or even worse, they may actually hold the sh shares and lend it out to someone else who may go bankrupt and your shares are gone. Finally, regulatory environment. I don't want to even cover that because the four things I've already mentioned are so complicated to evaluate that you're much better off buying your own shares because then you know what you have and you're protected by the law. I wish you good luck with your self-investing.